There's no slowdown in Aaron Judge right now. Let's get to the starting lineup. It's an interesting one tonight for Aaron Boone. There's no DJ LeMay who is dealing with a foot slash toe injury. So if you go from Miguel and Duhar into Kiner Falefa, who had a homer and a safety squeeze last night, he was the difference offensively. Kyle Higashioka and Tim LaCastro gets the start in center field. It's a very top heavy lineup, at least tonight, even though the guy at the bottom there in seven had a big night last night. Yes, he did. And it even puts more emphasis on the year that Aaron Judge has had. He has carried this team, including three walk-off home runs this year. So you talk about seventh inning on or coming through in the clutch and a depleted lineup, Aaron Judge is the guy. And as the Red Sox take the field, Michael Walker will be on the mound, 6'6", 215, the 31-year-old. Hasn't pitched since the 28th of June. Shoulder inflammation. But there is no pitch count. There is no innings limit on him. It's a full green light. And Alex Cora looks at big number 52 and believes this is the beginning of a little more consistency in the rotation. He reminds everybody there was a time we were starting four rookies in a row. Walker knows how to pitch. A really good changeup. Fastball changeup combination is the key. You mix in a slider cutter as well. But the changeup is the key. His arm speed, the deception, early in this game. We'll see how that looks. There's no one close to what Aaron Judge has produced with the 46 home runs. Schwarber has been excellent for the Phillies, who are right back now in the wild card race and a playoff team and they have had a tremendous series with the New York Mets here the last couple of days. Jordan Alvarez, Austin Riley, and Pete Alonso. Alonso's the only guy really close with RBIs, but Judge with his 46 reached 100 runs batted in. One thing that the Yankees have leaned on a lot is scoring runs via the home run, but yesterday they ended up winning via the small ball. Besides the home run that Isaiah kind of Falefa hit, it was the squeeze play that played big late in the game, and that's where you have to be concerned if you're Alex Cora with the bottom half of the lineup and how Aaron Boone uses that bottom half to manufacture runs. And speaking of round numbers, with a win last night, Aaron Boone picked up career win number 400 as a manager. He's 400 and 260. That's a 606 winning percentage. And guys, since 1960, the only two managers who had as good a record as Boone when they got their 400th Major League win, Earl Weaver, 639 winning percentage, and Dave Roberts, the exact same, 400 and 260. With that, we're set. Andrew Benatendi will be the first batter that Waka faces. Benatendi, of course, one of the heroes of the 2018 Red Sox World Series. Right. Win with Judge on deck. And Walker's first pitch, he swings at the first one, and it is fouled back. 93 to jump. And Attendee now getting his feet wet his first seven games. He hit 050 for the Yankees, but his last eight, he's just shy of 300. One, two. Hey, four, brother. Red Sox employ a shift. It's only Rafael Devers on the left side of the infield. He plays third tonight. Xander Bogart's at short. Christian Arroyo is at second. Eric Hosmer just acquired in first base in the outfield. Verdugo, Jaron Duran in center. Tommy Pham in left. Misses with the two-strike pitch. See, I like it, Eduardo. We're getting good. We just let the game breathe. Let our leader, Ravi, just take over. Set the stage. Beautiful thing. Ball, that's it. Just misses on the inside corner at 94. Ryan Addington is calling balls and strikes tonight. Mark Wegner is the umpire at first. Mark Carlson's at second. Jordan Baker is at third base. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. Good Looked like side. a changeup to me. Yeah. <laughs> I hesitate. <laughs> Only missed a couple of pitches this year. The slider. No. Good change. Big number 99. The right fielder Aaron Judge leads the American League this year in homers, RBIs, walks. 
Yesterday was the six-year anniversary of his big league debut. His first game was in 16, and he hit a homer August 13th. Ball. First pitch from Walker down and away. Ball one. So the quirky part of Judge tonight is when Tyone is on the mound, Judge is a 371 hitter, swings and misses there. He's got 15 homers and 30 RBIs when Tyone pitches for the Yankees. Nobody else in the majors has hit more than 10 homers in any one pitcher starts this year. So here we come with the next one to him. And that's on the ground, should be an easy one for Bogarts. Judge retired. Good hustle by Judge down the line. Good start for Walk. I got the ball down on Judge. And we talked about how do you get this guy out? Where do you pitch him? Sometimes you just got to mix it up. But down on the way, a good place to go. You get Judge to roll over that one. So many times we've seen already through the year where pitchers want to go there, and when they miss up, the outcome is completely different. It's him rounding third, headed towards home easily, just high five in his way through. Two down for Josh Donaldson, in the third baseman tonight. And Walker, first pitch jammed him, one hopper to Devers. And as Walker makes his first appearance since late June, he has a nine pitch top half of the first inning. Boston to the plate for the first time. The Sunday night baseball is rolling your way. Fenway Park on a gorgeous night, 73 degrees, first pitch. Buster only will join us shortly. Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, Carl Ravick starting lineup for the Red Sox, who are middle of the pack offensively relative to the Yankees, who are really top one, two in nearly every offensive category in the American League and the majors. Tommy Pham will get the leadoff spot tonight. Devers, Bogarts, and Verdugo. J.D. Martinez will hit fifth. Eric Cosmer, Christian Arroyo, who's done a nice job for Trevor Story. Well, that's seventh. Jamison Tyone's first pitch ball in ball one. To Tommy Pham has made quite an impression since he's come over here. Alex Cora is in love with him. You take a look at Tyone's numbers, 395. K rate just below average, a walk rate well below. And Pham laces this one. It's going to go down into the wall. Tommy Pham takes Tyone's pitch, and he ends up on second with a leadoff double. And having a conversation with Tommy Pham, during batting practice, one of the things he was saying is, I have to get on base at a higher clip. I know I can. One thing that he can do is hit a fastball. A very good, dead red fastball hitter. Got one late in the game yesterday. Gets another one to start the game and set the tone with this double. A 93 mile per hour pitch. That left a lot harder than that. Had the big hit Friday night. The Red Sox win. Here's Rafael Devers, third baseman. Four hits, last 40 at bats. Check his swing. Look at third. No swing. So it's one ball, no strikes. You know, Alex Cora mentioned how much he liked Tommy Pham before the yes, game. How hard he hits the ball, to your point, Eduardo. That ball was smoked. And pretty good speed now at second base. Two balls, no strikes. So Tyone had season I eight Ks on the 18th against Toronto. He had a terrific start in his last start against Seattle. Had Aaron Boone thinking, man, this is perfect. We needed it. He went deep into the game. And he will use six different pitches. Two balls and a strike. His first 18 starts, he had the lowest percentage of walks in baseball. His last four starts, he has his highest. That, that feels like a, a loss of your release point. Fam off second, then the next one, Devers, beats that into the ground. Rizzo backs up on it. Tyone is there in plenty of time as Devers is thrown out by a lot. What would you attach to that? walk rate changing so dramatically. I've always thought there's a correlation between giving up home runs and walk rate and kind of get scared out of the zone a little bit and it's normal to happen to me. It happens to all pitchers. Jamison Tyone had a really low home run rate to go with that low walk rate and as soon as the ball started going over the wall the walk rate started to go up and that's that's sort of natural as you kind of regress to sort of whatever your normal mean is and for Jamison Tyone 
that, that's exactly what happened. So Devers now 0 for his last eight. It's Andrew Bogarts. One for five with the double yesterday. Still over 300 on the season. Tommy Pham is at third. This one on the ground coming home is Pham. Hunter Falefa gave a look. Instead he goes to first. And the Red Sox grab a 1-0 lead. Well, you talk about manufacturing a run. That's exactly what the Red Sox did there. Devers pulls the ball, moves Pham over to third base, and then get the ball up the middle. You do not necessarily have to hit the ball in the air. Just hit it up the middle with the infield, the middle infield playing back. Tommy Pham gets a good jump. He scores easily. Red Sox up 1-0 on small ball. Something we've seen mo both managers utilize and talk about more. Is just putting the ball in play a little bit more. The contact is certainly kind of slowly coming back around full circle and begin beginning to be in vogue again. Now the Red Sox, Alex Verdugo, their number 99, bats in the cleanup spot, the right fielder. Seven homers, 54 runs batted in. So basically half the RBIs that Judge has. This is down low. On a close pitch, 2-0. Oh. Tony, why is it that lefties have struggled lately against Tyon? They're two for the last 29. Only Cal Raleigh has the two hits, both home runs off him. I think the, his four-seam curveball combination usually works well oh. against left-handed batters. He's got a really high spin curveball, and his four-seamer plays up better. Got good spin up in the zone. Generally for lefties, that's a good combination. Donaldson, Kiner, Falefa, Glaber, Torres at second. Rizzo is at first. Kyle Higashioka behind the plate. And Verdugo on the ground. And it's Torres who will be wearing the microphone of the earpiece for us in the third inning. And the out recorded. Tommy Pham, leadoff double. Knocked in by a ground out by Bogarts, and it's 1-0. Matchup. A lot of Yankee fans that come up to Fenway. They love to come here. Anthony Rizzo, big swing and a miss on the first pitch from Michael Walker to start the second. Hey, Coney, I always thought a good indicator of how intense the series was. I have players through the years tell me that in the series after the Yankee Red Sox series, there would be a natural letdown. Like the players would have a hard time generating a similar energy. It's a great point. One ball, one strike. Rizzo joins. A couple of others, so three of the first four swung at the first pitch. You can see the approach, perhaps, that Booney is, that his offense trying to take against Waka. Again, the shift on for Rizzo. That's a oh. called strike. Challenge for the Yankees after this series. They go home. They get Tampa Bay for three, Toronto for four, and the Mets for two. So the letdown's not allowed. Got him another change up there. It looked like from Walker. Maybe a fastball in the outside corner. In any event, another strikeout, his second of the night. And it's all set up by the fastball. Going to the candidates debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laugh about it, shout about it when you've got to choose. Every way you look at it, you lose. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Joe DiMaggio, a nation turns its lonely eyes to you. And Hosmer retreats. How did we just go from Paul Simon to because Paul Because that's on K-Rod. And you're never, you don't interrupt the master, but you start to <laughs> sing along with him. Come on, you were. Where have you gone? He sounded great, too, right there. It sounded tremendous. It went from, whew. Oh, I know. I know. I, I absolutely destroyed singing that. singing in the shower over here. Exactly. Shaq sounds good in the shower. We all sound good in the shower. Yeah, there you go. So a quick two up, two down, and here's Miguel Andujar, the designated hitter. Fourth trip to the big club for Andujar. Again, no DJ LeMayhew tonight. Certainly hope when he gets oh. his toe checked out in New York, everything is copacetic, and he's right back on the field and playing. Well, he has quietly had a stellar year, too, has DJ LeMayhew. Great year. Right behind Aaron Judge. Back at you, over the outstretched arm of the very tall Waka, but Arroyo is there to pick it up. I mean, he is 6'6". He jumps on the bump, not easy. 
But how about 16 pitches through the first two innings? The Yankees anxious to try to get to walk up. Nothing so far. Three future broadcast stars, we'll call that. Our coverage starts at 6 o'clock Eastern Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown on ESPN and the app. Little League World Series starts <laughs> Wednesday. ESPN, 1, 3, 5, and 7. The international teams all back at Williamsport, 20 Little League teams with an expanded field this year. J.D. Martinez, 0-1, now one ball and one strike. You were telling us a great Paul Simon story during the break. Yeah, well, the day Joe DiMaggio died in Yankee Stadium, Paul Simon went out to center field with his guitar and sang that famous song, Mrs. Robinson. I was warming up in the outfield. I sat out with my back against the outfield wall and got oh, the best concert I ever saw. What was the emotion that? Was it emotional? It was, and it was just so one of those unique moments where, you, you know, Paul Simon's all by himself, and he's just right. watching him walk out to center field with his guitar wow. and play that song. Five there from Tyone. J.D. Martinez, two balls, two strikes. Eduardo, nine home runs, 46 runs batted in for J.D. In 21, he had 28 homers. In 19, he had 36. He had 43 in 18 and 45 in 17. The power numbers are way down. On the ground, Kiner Falafel dives, and he can't get it. J.D. Martinez, a ground ball single. Back-to-back -back innings to start. The Tyone has let the leadoff man get on with a hit. And he's been doing a lot of that, hitting the ball on the ground. Fortunately for them, found one in the hole the other day, same way as this one, right back up the middle. Base hit, one home run since mid-June, June 14th to be exact. 182 at-bats now for J.D. Martinez just with one home run. Letting the ball get a little too deep, not being able to elevate it. And here's Eric Hosmer. Pitch up. Looks like he caught a piece of the K zone, but it's ball one, one and oh. One thing about Eric Hosmer, I believe this could be actually a match made in heaven here in Boston because of that wall in left field. It's a lot of fly balls to left field. Has trouble pulling the ball in the air. Fastballs in the air. Big fastballs up the middle. Eric Hosmer tends to have a very good swing to go the other way, and it could be made just for this ballpark. And you know what, Eduardo? This could be like a six-week audition for Hosmer as to whether or not he's part of the Red Sox in 2023. He's got three years left on his deal. But given the fact that the Red Sox top prospect Tristan Cassis is coming up, another first baseman. It might be that other teams will be calling the Red Sox about Hosmer in the winter. He swung there, so Hosmer now. One ball, two strikes. You mentioned the left field wall, which is which is a blessing. The curse for Hosmer this year, and recently it's been it's just pounding the ball into the ground. Statcast, powered by Google Cloud, shows Fenway Park. It's the third most offensive friendly ballpark in the majors behind Coors and the Great American Ballpark. 9% better than average. That was not an above average swing. The last two, he was fooled and he's gone on strikeouts. A little indecision right above the zone, the Tyone high spin four seamer. I'll tell you this all three lefties that have faced Tyone so far. They don't look like they are having a really good experience at the plate. Looks like they're not seeing the ball well, yet the righties have had pretty good swings off it. Christian Arroyo, the second baseman with J.D. Martinez, not a threat to run at first. One ball, no strikes. Trevor Story should come back. He's going to travel with the Red Sox as they hit the road after this game. Kike Hernandez could very well be in the lineup Tuesday. Michael Walker's return gives the starting rotation some consistency. And, play. and Arroyo has really been a revelation. 
He's barreled the ball up 11 times this year, which is a career high, and his strikeout rate is way down. Defensively, he's been really good. He can play anywhere. And that, that's so valuable for Alex Cora. It's definitely a different feel to the Red Sox. They feel like they have hope with Tommy Pham. Yeah. Mentioned Hosmer. McGuire, the catcher, brought in to replace Vasquez. Christian Vasquez was traded. That was an all-time low point for the, for the Red Sox. And right. now all of a sudden you feel like, hey, wait a minute. There's still time. Alex Cora is the best salesman for that. Hey, we're only four and a half back. We can get back in this thing. It's the middle of August. You want to go all-time low point or like season? <laughs> season low point. <laughs> uh, I could challenge you and up it. Popped up on the infield. Reiner Falefa is under it. There are two now. What are you challenging? Say maybe the line drive off Chris Sale's hand at Yankee Stadium that, could be a low. That's pretty low, too. Yeah, I think uh, certainly from a morale standpoint, the disconnect between the front office and, and yeah. the clubhouse. Yeah. That was what I was referring to. Thanks for cleaning me up, Carl. That's a partner right there. Just cleaned me right up. But I looked past you to Eduardo, whose eyes were like, wait a minute, all time low? They've had some real highs here recently with their World Series, but there have been some lows. We'll flush that out with Buster, too, about the direction the team took at the deadline and some of the ramifications since then. Ball strike one to Jaron Duran. He's the center fielder. And uh, the Yankees and their fans who've watched every Red Sox game against the Yankees that Duran has played in saw him make a nice catch in left center field. They've never seen him get a hit. He is 0 for 24 against the Yankees this season. This one to shallow left, then attendee towards the line, and he's there to make the play. 0 for 25 against the Yankees this season. Two are in the books. We'll be back to Fenway Park on Sunday Night Baseball. You guys are in the wild card race. Down the stretch for you, what's the most important factor in terms of you guys catching up? Oh, wow. We want to get healthy, but we got to be more consistent offensively. Uh, I know we've been talking about the pitching staff and obviously defense. I think when everybody's back, the defense is going to get better. Obviously, with Michael on the mound and, and Nate back in the rotation, I think we're going to pitch. But offensively, we got to be more consistent. What do you see in Waka so far tonight? Uh, the usual. Attack the strike zone. Uh, very efficient. Seems like his stuff is, uh, is playing tonight, and it should be a fun one. Alex, thanks. Thank you. Carl, back to you. Buster, thank you. 0-2 oh, now. Isaiah Kiner, Falefa, Higashioka, and LeCastro. One, two. 16 pitches to get through the first two innings. And 1-2 to Kiner, Falefa. Punched Boom. out. Walker has three strikeouts. Very sharp so far for Waka. Spotting his fastball very well, mixing his secondary pitches. Just when you're sitting on the changeup, he'll whiz a fastball in the inside corner right there. And that'll bring up Kyle Higashioka, the catcher. Cody hasn't pitched since the 28th of June. Look, a lot of times when an athlete misses some time, there's a little rust, but there's also rest that goes into it. A yeah. recharged? Absolutely. Walker. For a veteran pitcher, he knows what to do if he's healthy. His shoulder's feeling good. And everything's sharp. Even his cutter right there is just on or off. Every pitch has a purpose. Very good numbers on the season for Waka. 269 ERA, 70 and a third. This ball is driven, but it's going to drift foul. And out of Fenway Park, off the bat of Higashioka. Offensively, the Yankees have to take notice that Waka has been hitting the bottom part of the zone with the fastball and then using the changeup late to get guys. So far, he's been very good locating his pitches. Another one on the ground. Devers allows Bogarts the shortstop to take it, and he fires to first. But he out.
So it hasn't really been a seesaw season for the Red Sox. They were up for a month, and that was June. Other than that, neutral or down, brutal in July, 30th in Team ERA. There was a period in which they started four rookies consecutively. It was kind of a lost month for the Red Sox, battling back, getting healthier. So they had Winkowski, Cutter Crawford, Brian Bale, yeah. and Connor Siebold all on the mound at the same time. They have now won five of their last seven started by a rookie. Crawford was terrific last night in a losing effort. And this ball hammered towards left, heading over into the gap. Duran right at the wall. He's there to make the play and take one away from LeCastro, the number nine hitter. So far, Michael Walker has been perfect. Red Sox coming up. We will talk with Glennings as we say hello to Glaber Torres. And you can use the hashtag AskSNB on Twitter if you'd like to ask Glaber Torres a question. We'll do that for you. Glaber, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Shaded up the middle for Clevin, Kevin Ploiecki, then Tommy Pham, and Rafael Devers. And about four feet onto the outfield grass. Next one in the dirt. All right, so we talked about the atmosphere, Glaber. Tell us what it's like to wear the uniform at Fenway Park when it says New York on the front. Amazing. Uh, I feel like uh, it's an honor to play with the Yankees and also face the Rexor here in Fenway. I mean, when I was a little kid, I saw those games and I saw the crowd, and it's just amazing. And since 18, I play with the uh, with the Yankees, I mean, every time when we come here, it's just amazing. Every, every game is, is, is just look like, like playoff seasons. Yeah. Won't chase that. Uh, you said you watched a lot growing up, so who, who were your favorite players to watch growing up? Man, I really like Jeter for sure, uh, Cano. Uh, on the opposite, opposite team, uh, I watched a lot of David Wright from the beginning. Uh -huh. And Omar Vizquel, uh, I mean, Me uh, it was my inspiration to play short in the beginning during the minor league. And I mean, I, I feel like I'm a I'm huge baseball fan. When I was a, a kid, I played, I, I saw all the games right. possible. Laced into center, running over there is oh, Tim LaCastro, and he is fast. He ran that down fairly easily to retire Ploiecki. But um, I never, I never imagined I, I what we play with the Yankees. So I just, I just feel so proud right here. Yeah. All right. So the first question from our fans tonight, Glaber, since you see this guy every day, how many home runs do you think Aaron Judge is going to hit this year? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a question. Uh, everybody inside the club, how do? Um, I wish he do a record, you know, um, like how he hit right now. Every every time when he goes to the home plate, it's just amazing. I feel like easy. He can he can hit like. 57, I guess. I love that. 67. I love what you 57, just did there. 57, 57. 57. Yeah. I wish more. Yeah. We just saw the replay. That was a tremendous effort. And then you looked at the giant scoreboard as you get set for Rafael Devers. You looked at the scoreboard. What did you see in the replay? Uh, man, he hit really well. I feel the was the ball got me a, a little bit quicker than I had, but uh. With ever right now and just prepare a little bit earlier and, and be ready because he hit the ball really hard. Oh, yeah. All right. Ooh, it was a strike. 104 miles per hour off the bat of Tommy Pham was that hit. Yeah, I wish made that play and, and made some high light early in the game. <laughs> <laughs> How much more comfortable are you at second base? Uh, really good. Uh, last year it was a struggle. I mean, I'm preparing myself to play every day service stuff and play better, better oh, during every day. But I think the things happened last year, really a struggle in the shore. And 
uh, after the season and, and just get a really conver good conversation with Cashman. And basically, we decide I back to second and, and just prepare myself to play better defense and, and play the position I'm, I'm cop. So I just feel really good right now and, and try to, to make easy, really, really good plays and help my, my, my pitcher every time when I got opportunity. Two balls, one strikes to Rafael Devers. Fam is on for the second time. Then that hit a double and a single. What's Aaron Judge like in the clubhouse? Because you have a unique position. We all see what he does on the field. What's he like in the clubhouse? I mean, he's the best. He's a DJ. I feel he's a captain for us. And oh, oh. Devers hits that really hard in the center field. Fam I got it. To third base. And no advancement. Another rocket off the bat of a Red Sox, 110 miles an hour. That's called, they're barreling it up right now off Tyone. Let's go, Papa, let's go. Me and you. Um, man, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, I signed, so I'm coming to the team. I got a, I have really good relation with him. And, I mean, it's amazing inside the club how he always has the, the right answer for everybody. Yeah. Um, he helped everybody to to do the right thing and and keep the club how nice. You know, he put the music, Latin music, American music. We we always have fun inside the club. All right. So the Red Sox, first and third, one down for Xander Bogarts. Rounded out to the shortstop, knocked in a run his first time, and Tyone bends one in for a strike. Alefa. Hmm? Okay. okay. Just, let, just let me know. Okay, Glaber, for the fans, you don't have to tell us what you did right there, but what was that conversation with uh, your shortstop about? Um, yes, we tried to, if there was a stolen base, we always have Rizzo's the, got a chance there, uh, and he just pulled up short. Obviously not familiar with the foul territory. Yeah. All right, Riz. Um, we we try to anticipation if there was a solid base, who get the base. So uh, depend the pitch. I mean, Bogars is really good hitter to opposite field too, and we kind of to anticipate everything before. And we just saw the replay now of Anthony Rizzo not being able to make that play. Looked like he thought he was closer to the yep. railing that and anticipated. Uh, I thought like I feel like he, he thought the, the voice a little bit on the dugout. I thought too, but um yeah, is that over play? Oh, hey. oh he's up. Yeah, we got a highlight here. You got so, a highlight. Double play. And thank you right. very no, much. You're good. You're good. We appreciate it, Glaber. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Glaber Torres on a 6 4 3 double play gets Bogarts. Compare what you've seen from Aaron Judge this year in your history of watching the game. <clears throat> you know, I was spending most of my first time in the big leagues was in 98. Uh, playing in the National League Central, so I was watching, you know, the Sammy McGuire chase that year. Obviously, what Bonds has done before, who's just having a remarkable season. And the great, you know, he's doing does it on both sides of the ball too. He's running the bases great, but also just a great outfielder and a uh, great leader of our team. What are you seeing first time through the order? You're at bats against Michael Walker. Michael looks sharp. Obviously, just coming off the IL. I know he's had a couple rehab starts. I feel like he's had a good changeup working. With his good fastball, so he's been pretty sharp so far. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta pressure him a little better. Booney, thanks. Crawl back to you. Buster, thank thanks. you very much. First batter that Walker has faced in each of the three innings: Ben Attendee, and then Rizzo and Kiner Falefa all have struck out. And he's ahead of Ben Attendee, one and two. And he strikes out again. Goes with the high heat, 93. So Aaron Judge set to come up. Meantime, this is going on. ESPN2. Derek Jeter 
joins the show. Gets a big embrace from Alex Rodriguez, and of course, Michael Kay, who called the Derek Jeter game. So that is now over on ESPN2. I, mean, I don't know if you were looking for like boxing gloves or something that didn't appear like that was the way that was going to play out. A little Tommy Pham slap, maybe? No? <laughs> <laughs> no fantasy football action, nothing. Here's Judge, and the first pitch is away. Last time Walker was able to get Judge, it was on three pitches, and they were all down and away. And staring Judge. Who knows? First at bat. This is what Judge saw. First one down, misses the outside corner. This one leaked over. That was Judge's best opportunity there. Then 94 down again, that outside corner. Aaron Judge usually pounds that one into the ground. 85 mile an hour change up inside, right on right. Challenge for Judge. Challenge for anybody. Especially on 2 0, you think it fastball yep. in, swings right over it. Seventh swing and miss tonight. Judge 0 for 2, two walks and a strikeout last night. About 85, then 95 away as Walker. The veteran off to a terrific start tonight, and he's pitching. Yeah, every pitch has had a purpose. Talk about competitive versus non-competitive pitches. Walk is filling it up tonight. 2-2. Two -two. Wow. Didn't miss by much. Three and two. He threw him another changeup. K-Zone liked it. Those are the type of pitches early on in the year that were being called strikes on Aaron Judge. And we saw during the season Aaron Boone fight for those pitches for Aaron Judge, and right now it's paying off. That's a good point. First three ball count. Swing and a miss. Judge is gone. Back to back strikeouts. Five on the game for Walker, who lived in, up, and down. It's not just about the location. Obviously, you want to pitch Aaron Judge down, but it's the sales job on the changeup. His arm speed's almost faster on his changeup than his fastball. The spin is good, the location is good, the finish terrific. And now Donaldson is the Red Sox infield shifts, three on the left side. That's going to be foul. So these are all the balls that Aaron Judge has hit for home runs. You've seen the fastball slider, curveball, changeup, boom. I mean, there's very few of them are down. A lot of them are up, and some of them out of the strike zone. Almost a little flying V pattern right there where you saw all his power middle up. You can hit those corners down and in, what down and away, and have to change speed with them as well. Walker got it behind 2-0. and oh, And for Judge this season, after jumping out to a 2-0 -oh oh. count, he had an OPS of 14.58, only 14 strikeouts in the 78 plate appearances before that when he got ahead in a hitter's count 2 and 0 oh, Walker able to get him ahead of Donaldson 1 and 2 center field Duran is under it no sun issue no light issue it's put away Michael Walker so far so good Boston 1 New York nothing 66 homers He's got a homer in every 2.5 team games played. Oh. Bet on himself, and you know Aaron Boone said right away, he's not going to let the money thing get in his head at all. It's obviously proven to be something that's hardly a deterrent. I mean, can we speculate on like how that's going to work? Maybe the biggest backup job since Joe Willie Namath, right? We're going to win this. We're going to win this. I guarantee you. That guy's backing it up right there in right field. Messier with the Rangers? Yeah, I mean, right up there with Messier and Broadway Joe. It's not only that he backed it up and he's been doing it. It's He was doing it for quite some time in center field. That's a great point. That's what that's the value part of the MVP, I think, for Aaron Judge to his team because the Yankees have had an extra infielder all year long. DJ LeMayu bouncing around, Josh Donaldson, Glaber Torres. 
by moving to center field, he allowed Giancarlo Stanton to play right field and open up the DH so that you could have a better, a better lineup. Verdugo bases this one. Ben Attendee on the track. Nice running play to bring it in. That's kind of that intangible value that Aaron Judge has brought. It's not about you know, what do the metrics say on his defense in center field, what's his war ranking. Well, those are all great, but the, just, the, just the value of him for his team and what he did playing center field. Let's go around the horn here. Uh, Judge now the favorite to win the American League Most Valuable Player. The year is way better than what we saw last year from Vlad Guerrero Jr. You know, that was kind of silenced by Otani. There's clearly people who are going to think that Judge being a favorite over oh. Otani's a joke. But where are you on this point? Like I just said, the value part of what he's done for his entire team, the value to his team, to the Yankees. That's his pitching part, his center field. It's greater than just his numbers, and he's still leading the world in, in numbers as well. His war ranking, no matter whether you use fan graphs or baseball reference, they're off the charts. So you're go you vote for Judge? Right now, yes. I don't think it's a discussion. For me, it's Aaron Judge. And the value of center field is a great point, but where and what he has done to put his team up and where they are in the standings, to me, it plays. J.D. Martinez on the ground, charged nicely. Kalefa, he's there to make the play. How about you, Buster? I would vote for Judge now. I thought in midseason that Otani would zoom past him, but Judge, of course, has had this unbelievable month when his OPS is about 1,500. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was unbelievable last year in his production. Aaron Judge is better. Yeah. And look, we're going to be spending the whole month of September talking about whether or not Aaron Judge hits 60, 61, 62. I think that'll fuel his MVP candidacy. Hosmer with two down, oh. to the strike. Getting Stanton back, it feels like, would be a significant game changer because that would incline you to throw more pitches to Judge. It's a hard one to watch, and we saw it on Friday night. Aaron Judge came up late in the game. First base was open, and the Red Sox pitched to him. And many in the Yankees organization and teams that are opposing and playing against the Yankees will say that Matt Carpenter had that effect also. Coming in, he was as good as any player you could get during that time. Hosmer, an excuse me, cue ball down the line that's foul. And who thought, other than maybe Matt Carpenter, that prior to the season somebody would be saying that, like they miss Matt Carpenter, or he had a significant impact on the way that Judge and others were pitched to. Yeah, a huge loss. When he first got here, it was like, wow, it's a nice story. How are we going to get him uh, time in the lineup to Giancarlo Stanton going down, to Carpenter become a, a mainstay and now greatly missed? Bader's dealing with plantar fasciitis. He's still got a Cardinal hat on. He, of course, came over in the Montgomery trade, who's been really good for the Cardinals. Hosmer is gone. Good inning for Tyone as he gets for Dugo, JD, and Hosmer. One, two, three. We are through four. Mountain of a man, that guy, Aaron Judge. Monster of a man. Slash bracket today. Here's Rizzo. And the first pitch from Michael Walker misses away. Derek Jeter. That's a good point. And <laughs> There's laughter. I mean, there's yeah, laughter so. over on ESPN, too. Well, I mean, it's pressure, but One ball, one strike back here. Rizzo pulls that foul. Hi, right, Coney, let me ask you this question as we have this conversation. Hypotheticals with Tim Kirchner all the time. Where's Derek Jeter on the list of all-time greatest Yankees? You ever go down that road? It's such a hard list, right? It's a, it's Where's a, the start? That's why it's such a yeah, it starts with Babe difficult Ruth. question. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. How come they're all hitters? There's no pitchers. <laughs> Rizzo retired like on the... Whitey Ford? Yeah. On the Mount Everest of Yankees. Is, is Jeter one of them? We have the same argument here in Boston with the Celtics. It's yes. the same thing, greatest yes. Celtics, Mount Washington. Absolutely. Warden. He was right in the middle of a team that won four out of five World Series championships. Four out of five. 
right in the middle of it all. Having first in all those columns would lend a lot of credence. Buster, where are you on that? Yeah, Coney, if I were to have one guy from those teams, Whoa. it would be Mariano Rivera. Because I know there are member the members of the Atlanta Braves from those years who believe that if Rivera was on the Atlanta team rather than you guys, they would have been the team to win championships. That he was a separator and also voted in the Hall of Fame unanimously, which also separates him. It's fair. That is a fair argument because Mariano Rivera was a game changer. The problem is, is you had to get the lead, though, so Mariano to be effective. Well, and he was kind of the Jerry Rice of relievers in terms of his numbers just lapping all the other relievers in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Oh, that was an excellent pitch. Probably listened to Glaber during our interview and said, we'll give him that one. One ball, two strikes. And this is playable for Hosmer at first base in fair territory. And Labor Torres, I thought, was unbelievable. And the plays that he made, and the one that he didn't really have a play on that got by him, how he continued the conversation. I mean, the ball was just rocketed by him, and he gets up, dusts off the uniform, and he's continuing the thought on Aaron Judge. It's 104 miles per hour by him. And I can imagine people at home saying, well, if he wasn't talking to you guys, no, it was 104 miles per hour by him. He ended up getting a good jump and everything. And But you're right, continued to have that conversation. And then was able to turn two. Yeah. Miguel and Duhar next up. He it went off the glove of Waka up the middle that Arroyo picked up, so a 1-4-3. The changeup he's thrown his changeup a lot tonight. The other thing that he changed dramatically, Tony, his sinker usage is up pretty dramatically. Like he didn't throw one until 2017. He barely used it since. He tends to throw it quite a bit nowadays, like like seven, eight, nine percent, which it didn't exist a few years ago. It's a great pitch to righties, so you can throw that two seam sinker into righties that sets up his cutter, and then the changeup down and into righties, like we saw to Aaron Judge. Seems like every pitch that Michael Walk is throwing tonight is either right on the corner or just off. There is the first base runner and hit of the night for the Yankees from Miguel and Duhar. As Michael Walk had been perfect through four and two thirds. Right off the end of the bat, too, and Miguel and Duhar was able to keep that bat in the zone long enough off the changeup. See the rotation hits it right off the end of the bat. And they're hoping that they get to see the Miguel and Duhar that we saw a few years back. Sort of the question, Eduardo, was that luck or was that skill? We talk about exit velocity. No, actually, I think that's skill because he stayed on that pitch and threw it so long, even I though agree. the exit velocity was low on it. Sometimes it plays to have low exit velocity. Especially if you get it to the outfield grass. First time that Walker will pitch out of the stretch. Kiner Falefa struck out looking his first time up. Still 1-0 Boston scored in the first inning after a fam oh. double and a couple of infield ground outs. He was brought in. Red Sox start the night 56 and 59. Yankees 72 and 42. Top and bottom of the American League East. Such a big night last night for Isaiah Kiner for Leffa. Right. First home run and then the not the suicide but the safety squeeze. A lot of pressure on him with a couple of big prospects pushing him in the minor leagues. Dreamed of playing for the Yankees, now playing for the Yankees. Been very solid defensively. Runner goes, throw down, no throw from Ploiecki. Yelan Duhar has stolen base. You see, is now in scoring territory. That's his fourth stolen base of the year. That was the big home run. The Yankees had all hoped that the home run would be a walk-off so they could just dart into the clubhouse and silent treat. They did give him the silent treatment. This was the great play. 
And there was no play at all for the Red Sox. He ended up safe at first, brought in the run. The Yankees, thanks to IKF, beat him 3 to 2. Now he's got a chance for an RBI to tie it up. And that one misses from Walker. And all of a sudden, Michael Walker gets up a hit and a walk for his two base runners for New York. And the New York Yankees doing what New York Yankees have done all season long, and it's run the bases aggressively, stealing second with two outs, getting themselves in scoring position. Forcing the pitchers to make pitches. It's Aaron Boone ball this year. No doubt. Two things that he wanted to see change for the better in preseason. Defense, base running. And both of them have dramatically. Two on for Higashioka. So good behind the plate as a catcher, like raving about his catching abilities was Aaron Boone. But Higashioka is a notch below and still very Whoa. good as Walker picks up a strike on the corner. Good cutter just off, gets the call. A lot of Yankee fans. In attendance, when they grab a lead, you'll hear, let's go Yankees. And when they threaten, you'll hear worse. Devers, nice play, looked at second, fires to first, and Rafael Devers, whose defense has improved dramatically. He was a minus 12 outs above average at 21. He's a plus two this year. Be smarter at defense. That's what Rafael Devers said. Looked at second, decided to go to first, end of inning. First pitch, swing and a miss. Started out with Arroyo Duran Ploiecki. Put a star on that play by Rafael Devers there to end the inning. Diving to his right and then throws across the diamond. Arroyo, one ball, one strike. I think uh, I think Mantle's on that list, and then I think Joe DiMaggio's probably on the list of all time. Hard. I mean, it's... Paul Simon wrote a song about him. I mean, you gotta sure. you gotta put him on the list. <laughs> But what I'm hearing is, you, does anyone have Derek on the list in the Mount Rushmore? I think he's sort of 6-7 area. I would agree. He, he's like on the back side of the 45 you listen to. The B, you know, the B side. You flip, like flip it, it over and there he is. I don't know. I I think I can squeeze him in there. Who are you throwing are you out in Wardo? Um, I, I think I can just <laughs> play devil's advocate here. You have to sort of squeeze him in. I mean, this is a player that we saw. I think about Dad and even when I was 10, yeah. I think about me being a dad and my two beautiful girls. And there were mistakes that were unexplainable. And uh, I think it's really good. Confessions of Alex Rodriguez Ooh. is on ESPN2 right now. It's deep thoughts. Deep yeah. thoughts. Arroyo's gone back to back punch outs for Jameson Tyone. Sunday night baseball game will be a historic moment field at the Little League World Series Classic. That's what Christian Arroyo looked like when he was a little leaguer. Austin Hayes. The Orioles have been rolling along. And so it's Mike Elias said, I really believe we're going to make the playoffs this year. 7 Eastern time for Pacific ESPN. Special kids cast on ESPN2. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown will be in Williamsport, ESPN, and the ESPN app. Ah! So we got to give equal play. Don't we have to do a Red Sox Mount Rushmore now? Yeah. Ted Williams. Yes. Yes. Poppy. Pedro. I would think Pedro, for his performance here, the retired numbers. Bobby Dory, is Dremski, Fisk. Jim Rice. With all due respect, it's a lot easier. <laughs> and there's also there's just not as many. I mean, the, the, the Pedro historic years, I think you do. I think you have your picture here, Coney. Could you imagine if Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio were actually traded for each other like it was rumored way back when? Duran hits this one to Torres, who smothers it. 
retiring. Duran retired. Want more stats? Just ask Siri, who leads MLB in home runs? Siri may bounce back at you and be like, could you ask a real question? <laughs> that was a trade that was wrote, written on a cocktail napkin. I heard that story. After a few scotches. <laughs> a few. Jim Duran now is 0 for 26 yep. this year. Against the Yankees. Against the Yankees. Kevin Millar in 2009 was 0 for 23. Well, Millar is very grateful then that this is going on. <laughs> yeah. Tyone, since the double play, Bogarts has really settled in. 6 4 3 double play. Came in the bottom of the third. Since then, really, nothing's been hit hard. And he tries to get Plowecki for the second time, but he's behind 2 0. Cy Young play for the Red Sox? Yep. He wasn't good. He, didn't, he never won a Cy Young, so. Right. Cy Young, Ted Williams, Yaz, Bobby. Tyone. He continues to pitch well. Game moves along. We head to the sixth inning. It'll be 9 1 Judge. They're only right next to the Red Sox. Dugout. 1 0 Boston. They scored their lone run in the first inning. Yankees, no runs, one hit. Red Sox, one run, four hits. Michael Walker. Starts Tim LeCastro off with a breaking ball for a strike. He's in his fourth stint with the team. And he can fly. Let's see Devers field. Fires a fastball. And LeCastro is retired. Back-to-back -back good plays by Rafael Devers. Listening play to take one away from Nagashioka. Save a run in the last inning. And then this one to get the speedy LeCastro. Yeah, Devers has had a nice night defensively. Taking a lot of work at third base and I think what really helps as well is now you have Eric Hosmer at first base where you know that you can just let it go. Anything on the ground anything in the dirt straight up he knows how to work that bag really well. Definite improvement first base from what they had in the first half of the season. So guy, go ahead. I was going to say guys we you know our friend Tim Kirk Kirkjian always talks about how when you go to the ballpark you see something you've never seen before. Well I had one of those actually before the game with Michael Waka. He came in from his warm up guys and, and typically starting pitchers will go into the runway into the clubhouse wait for the national anthem to be played the run out on the field. He came in put his stuff down and then went out on the line without his equipment with his teammates and stood for the national anthem. Swing and a miss there from Ben Attendee. They, the Red Sox had as many players out for the national anthem as I think we've seen this season lined up. And a 1 2. Ben attending, end of the bat going back. Bogarts can't get there. I should say Devers. And he cannot get there. The shift on. Rafael Devers just over the outstretched arm. That's a single for Ben attending. And it brings Judge to the plate as the go ahead run potentially. Reaching on the changeup, breaking, breaking his bat. If you're a hitter, it's a thing of beauty. Tony, it's the second hit he's given up, both on changeups, both off the end of the bat. Soft contact. Here's a guy that is known for hard contact. Round out to short and a strikeout for Aaron Judge. Got ahead 2-0 and and then three swings and misses last time up. Start 
Starts him off with one on the outside corner, and you can see round out in the first inning in red, strike out in the fourth inning where he was all over the strike zone. One of the things you hear people say about Judge, he's in that load position earlier this year than he has been in years past. There's that two seat fastball you were referring to earlier, Carl. Looks like it's on the inside corner and runs in off hard and gets Judge to get tied up on it. So what have we got here, Cody? We went outside, we come inside with the sinker. He's ahead 0-2. See that two seam fastball running in off the plate, getting Judge to chase. Now you can see now you've got the change up down and in right off of that if you want it. Good velocity from Michael Walker. He's fortunate that ball was out of the zone because it was a few inches higher than what he wanted. So exactly where Pulecki wanted the pitch down and away, bottom outside quadrant, instead it stayed up. Got him, Judge, into the glove of Pulecki. Brought it inside, kept it up. Second strike out of the night of Judge. Six of the game for Walker. Just staying one step ahead. I'm guessing changeup. I bet the Judge was guessing changeup too. Crossed him up, went upstairs with the four seamer and beat him. This is one thing that Aaron Judge has been really good at this year is up and in. But it's what count? When he's behind in the count, that's where you have to execute with Velo, especially when you've been staying away, away, away from him. If you're behind in the count and you try to do that to Aaron Judge, it's going to be a 2-1 game. Here's Donaldson. Oh! Strike one. Well, you're living a little dangerously with Aaron Judge when you're going up there, up and in. I mean, the OPS is 1,900. Down and in, very good as well. Up and away. It's the down and away, obviously. That's a challenging pitch, but the Red Sox the last couple of nights have really worked the entire zone. They've not been afraid to go up. Well, they haven't been afraid to attack him in certain counts within the zone. They've been smart about it. One big mistake was against Nathan Evaldi yeah. in Friday's game. Tried to go up and in at 93 miles per hour. That did not work. 0-1 on the way to Donaldson, who steps in with 11 homers, 43 RBI, and that misses away. Yeah, context matters. How you set up the pitch matters. We can show you location, and certainly that, that's important. But how you get to that location and which pitch you threw in that location matters as well. Walk has been one step ahead all night long. Donaldson called strike on the swing. Let's go back to that Aaron Judge bomb near off the Baldy. The difference is the count. You can show location all you want. It's it's the count, early in the count, that Evaldi tried to get it by Judge. How do you get there? That was a 1-1 pitch that he hit the home run on. And earlier in the game, we spoke of if there's a letdown after a series of Yankees, Red Sox series, there can also be a letdown after you face Aaron Judge and have to go after Josh Donaldson. I think Pawecki's done a nice job to make sure that Waka stays focused because this man here could turn around the score just with one swing. Donaldson's gone. Bat dropped, strikeout number seven, and six very strong innings for Michael Walker. He once again, he's got two hitters sitting on off-speed pitches, and he blows the fastball right by, and this one's right down the middle. Plus, be sure to catch up on the docu series about the life and Hall of Fame career of Derek Jeter. Michael Walker continues to pitch great. Aaron Judge now in his career with the two strikeouts 
nine career strikeouts 0 for 14 against Walker. Good night so far at the plate for the leadoff hitter for the Red Sox Tommy Pham a double and a single he scored a run was stranded at third in the second inning. Fan brings a fire. We've all seen it. And after that trade deadline where the team was down, as you said, Coney, you know, one of the low points, Vasquez walks off the field with Houston. Everybody in the media knows what's going on. He doesn't. He comes off. They surround him for questions. He's immediately ushered out. You know, the team was a little flat. You bring a guy like Fam in and a veteran like, like Hosmer. Fam can light a room up, but he's, he doesn't care about the low point. He's here to win try to get into the postseason. All you got to do is look out at that big monster in left field and you see that Tampa Bay beat Baltimore. The Blue Jays were beaten by the Indians. So the two teams immediately ahead of the Red Sox in the American League East. Two teams that they're chasing in the wild card. Both lost. I should say the Guardians. I said the Indians. The Guardians beat them. Shane Bieber outpitched Kevin Gossman in that one. Funny, Alec Corr said, I, I'm not really sure what to root for. Like, do I root for Cleveland? Do I root for Toronto? Fam is three for three. Lines one into right on a pitch that was up. I keep throwing him fastballs. And that's one thing that Tommy Fam has been good his entire career is hitting that pitch, the fastball. You might beat him one time up, but the more he sees it, the better he's going to get with it. So far, Tommy Pham, three for three. That's a position leadoff hitter that has been a void since Kike Hernandez went out. He should return next week. Here's Devers. You would think Rafael Devers and maybe single in his last at bat will get him going he's got to turn things around he's had one of the great starts to a Red Sox career in their history jumped on that one and pulled it foul so Tris speaker Ted Williams Betts Yastrzemski Bobby Dorr whose numbers retired Nomar Ruth, Reggie Smith, Rice, and there's Rafael Devers. Highest war in Red Sox history through age 25. I'm not sure he's climbing with a bullet. Now he's not rising the charts that quickly, but he's he's amongst the game's greats when it comes to the Red Sox. He came to the party early. That's the that's the key. Yeah, he was right. a young man when he made it to the big leagues. He's still a young man. He was out here early today. Working off the machine on the field and it was predominantly sliders, slider after slider, trying to get that bat path to be consistent. Keep the bat head in the zone long enough, and what he wanted to do was play pepper off that wall. So he's struggled to be able to drive the bottle left field. That's where the money's at, that's where it was last year for Rafael Devers, and that's where he needs to be again. Doesn't offer that one outside. We'll hear that conversation that Eddie had with Devers a little later. Boston one for seven with men on. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. I want to take a quick second to say hello to a friend of mine. I grew up in this area, interned at a local TV station, and one of the more popular sports anchors, Mike Lynch, suffered a stroke recently. He's in the hospital. He's rehabbing. I spoke to him today, and it sounds like he's going to be okay. But for all the Red Sox fans who grew up in this area and watched local sports, they knew Lynchy. He was a star at Harvard as well as fam goes, and that's fouled off. So we want to just send our best to him on a full recovery it appears as if that's going to be the case but it's been a struggle for him and he's a uh, he's really a role model great great guy and incredibly popular in this community so we're sending our thoughts out to you Lynchy. Okay. 
I like I like that uh Fan was on the go right there with no outs, 3 2. Gets a fastball, most likely. Devers could turn on it. It's a breaking pitch. Gets Fan a, a shot. He's going again. Devers hammers this one to right. Judge looks at it, and the bat's flipped. It's gone. Devers, 25th of the year. And the Red Sox tack on two more. A no doubt about it shot for Rafael Devers. Maybe that single in the second did get him going. This is all the work that Rafael Devers put in early. Wanted to get his timing down, wanted to make sure the back pad stayed, and wanted to make sure that he was going to be quick inside. Don't think pull, let the hands react in. And Rafael Devers reacted right here. Tyone hits a spot up and in. Takes a few back steps, but the bat head just threw the zone beautifully. He knew it. 3 0 Boston for Xander Bogarts. Then ball one. And you are correct, Eduardo. That was an incredible swing to get to that pitch and hit it that hard, that far. That's a special talent right there, Rafael Devers. Climbing on the Red Sox war list. It's like that. Aaron Judge knew it right away. Devers knew it right away. Got to believe that Jamison Tyone knew it right away. about how quick you have to be if you're thinking middle away and then all of a sudden you believe in your hands that's clearing the hips trusting what you see and allowing that ability to work 433 feet by the time it lands over 110 miles an hour off the bat on that pitch with that swing it's only a handful of players in the major leagues that and have that kind of swing on that kind of pitch. Yankees shift on a 2-1 count to Xander Bogarts. And he hits it where there are three Yankees. It's Donaldson who will get Bogarts. And if the Red Sox are to make a run, it's a given that Rafael Devers is going to be a main part of it. But he's going to need Bogarts. He's going to need J.D. Martinez to turn it on in a major way. Two guys that have been in the middle of the lineup the entire time are just not driving in runs this year. They're not driving the ball the way that they are supposed to drive the ball and in the, in the way they can drive the baseball. One out for Alex Verdugo. Monster seats down to the batter's box. You know, you said interesting that they ran Fam 3-2, likely to get a fastball. What is the impact of a base runner going there on the pitcher? Well, you you understand it too. I mean, it can be a distraction, but I think obviously Core is trying to stay out of a potential double play. Look out! Donaldson is backing right up into Heiner Falefa. It can be a distraction, but it looks like, as Eduardo said, Tyone threw the pitch where he's trying to throw it. Yep. You got to throw a strike, but you want to paint it up and in. 96 miles an hour. Went out a lot harder than it came in. You know what that screen? No doubter. So 29 of 30 ball marks. That's a homer. I'm trying to think of which one. So right field 433 wouldn't be a home run. Probably Colorado because of the height the of the wall. Not because of the distance, but the height. Yesterday. Rizzo hit one the other day that should would have been a homer. What, 10 homer, 10 parks? No, actually yesterday he hit one late in the game. It went 380 feet. And it would have been a home run of 28 out of the 30 ballparks. And it was Colorado and here at Fenway. 28 of 30.
you guys, let's face it, the relationship between Red Sox fans and the team leadership right now is a little bit frayed because of what happened the trade deadline in this upcoming offseason. Whether or not they sign Devers to a long term deal, be a litmus test, I think, for the Red Sox leadership. I'll tell you this, they better. Kid grew up being a Boston Red Sox fan. His dad was a diehard Boston Red Sox fan as well. Loves to play in front of this crowd. This is an easy place to play. There's the guy that runs the organization reading his Twitter timeline saying, keep Rafael Devers. <laughs> I am Bloom, one and two. JD fouls that off. It's been corrected because there is no ballpark that that ball that he hit wouldn't be a homer. That was out in the Grand Canyon. It's high I'm listening to us. Come on, wave. Just wave if you hear us. <laughs> I got an idea. Just smile. Hey, smile. There he is. If you zoom in a little bit more, it might make him a little more uncomfortable. So, yes, Devers' home, home run ball is a home run in every part. And here's the company that he keeps, too. Thanks to Sarah Langs. That's his seventh homer on a pitch 95 miles an hour or greater velocity. Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. That's the company he keeps with turning around the fastball. J.D. Martinez caught looking. Tyone out of it, but not before. Some loud sound off the bat of Rafael Devers. Watch Xander in the background, and then he knows right away, too. His hand goes up as Devers heads to first. And then second, third, and home. Devers got 25, and 62 runs batted in. It's 3-0 Boston. Michael Walker, first pitch, first swing from Anthony Rizzo. As we move to the seventh inning on a Sunday nighter here at Fenway Park. 15th swing and miss that Walker's gotten. And man, has he been impressive in his first game since June the 28th. Shoulder inflammation, whatever it was, appears at this point to be healed. He's throwing so well that Alex Cora is going to run him out here for the seventh inning and his first start back. Just 76 pitches at this point. Generally, you come off an injury and there is a pitch limit, an innings limit. He said before the game, no, 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 we're, we're good to go here. You could be that way with a veteran pitcher. It's not like you're trying to protect a young arm or somebody that you're worried about their future. Michael Walker knows what he's doing out there. You trust him to tell you the truth. And you also have to trust what you've seen from the opposition with the swings. Two hits so far, both of them off the end of the bat. Four base hits. 53 strikes out of 78 pitches. You got Rizzo to strike out and ground out in the fifth inning. And now the count full. So a couple of three ball counts from Walker that we didn't see early in the game. We've seen here in the last couple of innings. Second plate appearance. Uh, Appearance so far longer than five pitches. Judge had the other one struck out in the fourth. And he got Rizzo there. It's been a money pitch for him. A change up again. Strikeout, third in a row, eighth overall. All right, here's Glaber Torres earlier in the game. But, um, yeah, he's out of the play. Oh, hey. Yeah, we got a hot light here. Oh. All right. No, you're good. You're good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, thanks again to Glaber Torres and all those that have participated in the microphone and earpiece wearing sessions on Sunday night. We are grateful. We know that you're doing your job out there, and we really appreciate your ability to multitask and allow the viewer at home, wherever they may be watching, to get a feel for what it's like. Boy. It's right in the middle of a double play. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to personally thank him for turning that double play. <laughs> thank you, Flavor. Who was it, Francisco Lindor earlier that yeah. in the year? The shirts are on the mound. Thank God I made that play. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Walker gets the call. That's a big one. Now two balls and a strike. Labor twice has popped out to Hosmer. Look out. You're playing pitching coach, Coney. Anything at all? I mean, he's really been efficient with his pitches, but another three ball count. You're starting to worry just a bit, although you, the trust factor is still there because of that home run. The Devers gave you a little cushion. This one hit on a line, about faces Duran. He's there to make the play. Hit it well, 108 off the bat, but it ends up in the glove of the center field. Meet Ultimate Hybrid, advanced ceramic and wax technology. The best of both worlds, but better. Only from Mothers. Labor hit that ball hard. You know, he's been in a little bit of a slump, but Aaron Boone said, I, you know, he's maybe a little bit out of sync, but he has hit the ball a few times here in the last couple of games hard, and they've just been caught. That was another example of it. Yeah, it's a hardest hit ball all night off of Waka. It's really been that kind of night for Michael Walker all night long. On the edges with all of his pitches. Only two hits allowed. Next one to Andujar. He popped up this way. All right, so are you a, a believer in the Red Sox and the idea that Cora is pushing when you get Walker back, Gut Story coming back, Kike Hernandez is coming back? That's one part of it. The other part is, are the teams ahead of you? Are you going to be able to catch them? Well, there's time. That's the, that's, this is the information and the material that Alex Cora wants. Michael Walker has nine strikeouts. He's through seven innings. And he continues to be nasty on the bump for Boston. They lead it three zip. They for the team. Well, uh, have you taken for granted how cool it is to play here in Boston? Claro, mío, es lo algo que me emociona. Sabemos que es uno de los mejores fan, de los fanáticos y me agrada porque todos los días el estadio está full. Y es, es un, para mí es lo algo de lo más emocionante que he visto en pelota. You're walking down the street or you're driving down the street, you see Devers on their back. What does that make you feel like? Feliz, me siento contento. Es mi primer año es algo que siempre lo he tenido en mente. Los muchachos, la, la persona, los fanáticos usen como mi, mi chaqueta y algo que me emociona cuando voy en la carretera, que hago así, miro mi número, mi apellido, me siento bastante contento por eso. We're going English really quick here. One word, no dos, no dos palabras. Bogarts. Capitán. Hosmer, new teammate. Mm. Happy guy. Evaldi. Mm, good person. Okay, good person. Kike Hernandez, who's coming back supposedly on Tuesday. I think he's the best utility in the league. The best, he would say he's the best center fielder in the league, but you would say utility. Yeah, because he plays second, short, everywhere he plays, he plays good. Alex Cora. The mentor to the, to the team. You know English. No, I don't speak English. You know English. <laughs> no. Te quiero, papá. Igual, Breaking news. <laughs> that was great. While the interview was going on, Tyone continues to pitch. He got Hosmer and Arroyo to ground back to him. I'm always blown away by the comfort level that many of the Latin Americans have in speaking English. You know, Soto, we saw, obviously, last week, Devers there. It's put yourself in their shoes. Absolutely. Impossible. Or, or not, because it's quite clear that when you work hard at it, you can do it. 
This ball laced to center field. LeCastro going back, turning around at the wall. Oh, Tim LeCastro with a wet gem taking away extra bases from Jaron Duran. That's a great catch. Talk about going back, knowing where you are, with that right hand, feeling for it. Feels for the wall, makes the catch. Jaron Duran, you're still 0 for the season against the Yankees. Comes Ryan Brazier, first man out of the Red Sox bullpen. It'll be 7 8 9 for the Yankees. Due up, Kiner Falefa to lead things off. Brazier's Whoa! first pitch at the knees, 97. Call strike one. Could not have gone better for Michael Walker or Alex Cora for that matter. 17 swing and misses, too, out of those 81 pitches. 48th appearance for Brazier. That's the most of the Red Sox relievers. One ball, one strike. He did pitch in the game on Friday night, a perfect eighth inning. Jam shot there, Devers to his left. And he's able to make the play. Take a look at our game track. It's brought to you by Geico. The one walk of the nine strikeouts, the 89 pitches. Not only was it the nine strikeouts and the consistently ahead in the count, throwing all of his pitches on the edges, but he controlled contact too. A lot of soft hit balls off the end of the bat and off the handle. Brazier fires 197, top of the zone. Oh, and one. Whoa, the rocket. important stuff, and as you guys know, as as Alex again was talking earlier, what uh, what Andy, Andy did, Pat did so well in New York when they thought he was giving up. Go to Rock, Roger Clemens Pitching School over on the K Rod cast. Paul Simon, cheater. You think that was the Clemens compound there? The Rocket's eating well. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't missing no meals. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, I, I, I should talk. Right. <laughs> Can't even button my jacket up here. The average exit velocity against Walker tonight, 79.6 miles an hour. Hey, this it's been Rafael Devers night not only offensively but defensively making four plays at third base one backhanded play that saved the run but also going in on baseballs and going to his left Higashioka shallow center Duran is there Suit up this summer, MLBShop.com, the largest selection of authentic caps, t-shirts, collectibles, and more. Outfit the whole family. Your favorite teams, gear at MLBShop.com. You want a hat, you want a t-shirt, you want a collectible, MLBShop.com. Here's an odd one on Devers. I don't know how to explain it, but on Sundays this year, Rafael Devers, who's having a great game offensively, is hitting 400. Highest in the majors. You wouldn't normally mention it, but it's not just a season thing. It's over the last three years. Rafael Devers leads the majors in batting average on Sundays. 353, his OPS is 1,120. And he had, he had 19 homers, he now has 20. Any thoughts on the Sunday Devers connection? Yankee killer. Yeah. Play him every Sunday? I mean, he does one this one. on Sundays. I would go no Chick-fil-A, baby. <laughs> Get it, Wade Boggs used to play third here. There you A lot go. of chicken. There you go. Rafael Devers, not on Sundays. Chicken man. Well, if Rafael Devers is playing on Sunday, you know he's playing the Yankees, and he's killing them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Wade Boggs' number. 
And Moo, Chick fil A. More chicken. Brazier. Nasty pitch there. LeCastro, former Ithaca College bomber, swinging and missing at that one. Why is there a cow in the stands? More chicken. Why wouldn't there be a cow in the stands? It's the Yankees, it's a Sunday. Then bring your dog to the park. Yeah, now it's bring your cow to the park. Embarrassing. We had the producer and director give a mookie bets <laughs> oh, and an utterly, <laughs> utterly ridiculous. There you go. Is it bring your pet to the park day? It's a good question. Snuck him in. There we go. Castro, high fly, Bogarts calls it as he backpedals, still backpedals. He's there to make the play. Brazier picks up where Walker left off. Yankees not scoring any runs recently. Down three zip, bottom eight coming up. Neil Diamond blaring through Fenway Park. Here's Loisica's numbers. How important is he going to be down the stretch? Huge. His strikeout rate is down. The walk rate is up, and that's got to change. And he has the ability to do it. The Yankees really need him at this point to step up and fill the void. It'll be Kevin Ploiecki, the nine hitter, and then back to Pham Endeavors as we play the bottom of the eighth inning. And that misses ball one. And under the radar, pretty solid start from Jamison Tyone. Yes, it was. Got through seven innings, only six hits, three earned runs, no walks, four Ks. But obviously, the, the Devers blast is the story of the night so far. Beaten into the ground, Russo will flip it, and there's one down. up here too. David Cohn's hip continues to heal. But you are bopping around. Great to see it. From where you were to start this season to where yes. you are today, it's remarkable. I'm back. I am so very back. And pumped about it. Yes. You even brought out Sunday's best to wear tonight. You're just feeling fresh. Now it's time to go on a diet. <laughs> Do some sit-ups. <laughs> we were talking about a potential golf outing and some steak and you're saying well, if I do a couple sit-ups, I could, I could have that salt brick steak that you're talking about. The one ball, no strikes to Pham. And this guy throws hard. Pham likes the fastball. Now, that's a good point. A buddy of mine brought down the steak. He said, you know, you ever have these Omaha steaks you can get? And I said, you know, I've had those before. I've been to Omaha. He's like, have you tried a salt brick steak? I've never heard of it. Yeah. And uh, it's one of those frozen things. I guess you can order them at home. Oof. So we'll get you one of those. Nice. I'm in. There goes the diet. That lasted. <laughs> Two and out oh a fan. Swing and a miss. Really well located. Fastball at 98. That thing had some sink on it, too, because Tommy Pham is a hitter. You see that pitch middle in, and all of a sudden it drops at the last second out of the zone. Jonathan Loisega was one of the very best relievers in the American League last year. Been in trouble this year as he's dealt with some, some arm issues. Now would be a good time for the Yankees if he could get it working again. That's down. You know, Buster, so last night it appeared as if Aaron Boone was going to use Efros as a closer. He used Chapman early in the game, and Chapman has been pitching really well. But you went into tonight when we asked it before the game. So you have a, let's say, hypothetically, you've got a one run lead. Who closes? What was the reaction to that question? Yeah, I love Booney. Oh, maybe a little bit of Holmes, <laughs> a little bit of Peralta. It's definitely a fluid situation, the back end of the games for the Yankees right now. And I think 
Look, the one thing I took away from Booney, I don't know if you guys agree with me, that there, there's no question that there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly where Chapman is, exactly where Holmes is right now. What about Luizaga? But I think they Routine. feel like among that group by the end of the year, they're going to get back to having a dominant bullpen. You see him every day. Do you, do you feel that way? Do you feel the uncertainty, the lack of confidence, perhaps not in Booney to the player, but the player and his ability to get the guys out? Right back at you. Good job with the glove by Loisiga, and he throws out Fam. But he said it, Carl. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to put it. Do they believe in themselves? Any best coverage in today's game? Take a look at Devers through the T-Mobile multi-view. 3-2 count. Trying to go up and in on Rafael Devers, who came out early to the ballpark. Swung for a good 15 minutes on his own and figured out one thing. I'm really good up and in. Watching the game Friday night after Holmes really struggled and Chapman was good prior to him, I thought that's the end. Chapman's going to be the closer now. Devers hits this one hard. Good read. And LaCastro is there to make the play. But Aaron Boone said, no, we're not using Chapman to close games. Not yet. There's a comfort level. we got to build him up and his confidence. Garrett Whitlock ready to come in as the Red Sox try to close it out. Last chance for the New York Yankees, and they have to deal with Garrett Whitlock. ERA of three, strikeout rate above average, walk rate way below average. Wasn't sure if we would see Whitlock. Alex was a little hesitant, but he paints at 96 to get things going here. Drew Rasmussen took a perfect game into the ninth inning for the Rays. That's the number one star for pitchers on this Sunday. Number two's got to be Michael Walken, what he did here to a very good Yankee offense. Seven innings, nine strikeouts, and only two hits. You know, when you look under the hood, too, you see it was legit. You know, yeah. Michael Walken, a lot of times you say, well, a lot of hard hit balls, good defense. Yeah, he got away with some things. Uh uh, he was on the edges all night, controlled contact. Had a lot of swing and misses. It all checks out for Michael Walker tonight. Dominant performance. Whitlock last pitched on Friday, and he got six of the seven he faced in the ninth and tenth inning, and off to a good start here tonight. Different night for this guy, Aaron Judge, who has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Yankees. 0 for 3 tonight. You can see the way Walkup worked around him. He threw the change up down, heater up. Reminds me a lot of the North Carolina four corners, right? You go there, each corner so far, all you need now is the up and away corner, and I would not go there against him. Down and away for ball one. That, that's how you pitch to a, to a great hitter, which is what Aaron Judge absolutely is, is you mix it up. Oh, try to get him on the defensive, get him thinking, get him set it off speed, and then throw him the fastball. Pitch him backwards, just like you said, Eduardo. The four corners deemed, deemed uh, Smith. North Carolina, you know what? Up and down, in and out. Right down the middle, 98. Dangerous pitch. Hey, Loan Depot is the official mortgage provider of Major League Baseball. It's back again this year. The Home Means Everything campaign benefiting the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Part of this program, Loan Depot donates 25 bucks for every RBI hit during the season. Last year, it totaled more than 665,000. A big thank you to Loan Depot. One, two. Up oh, and Judge didn't offer it at 97. He tried. Tried to go for that fourth corner. A zone lit up. This is when you want to face judge too. Nobody on base in a three run lead. Two reasons he's been able to get away with those pitches right down the middle. Stuff. It's so much harder to see when it comes with that spin. 
that arm angle to be able to square it up. Aaron Judge with two strikeouts tonight. If he strikes out again, it would be his ninth three strikeout game of the season. We've talked a lot about diets. This is a steady diet of fastballs. Yes. Very confident pitcher out there on the mound as well. You knew it was going to happen as soon as he said that, right? Change the diet. Change it up. Just like Coney's diet. Get some vegetables. <laughs> A little fiber. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming from Whitlock to Judge. I would think, and I know that Aaron Boone spoke with Giancarlo Stanton today. That feels like if all things go well with the rehab, et cetera, I mean, he's like what, four or five days away from coming back. But the guy that played would be delighted to see him back in the lineup. He chases that in strike got number three of Aaron Judge. After all those fastballs and that one changeup, a slider like that will work. You can see the spin and the location. That's a strike for a long time until the very end. That's his third strikeout of the night. And on his way to the dugout, he stopped to tell Anthony Rizzo what he saw at the plate. You can be as mad as you want. You can be as disappointed as you want. Yet, he's making sure his teammate gets as much information as possible as he headed towards the on deck circle. Josh Donaldson with two outs. If the Yankees don't get a run, this would be the ninth time they were shut out this year. And Donaldson, slow roller, tough play, bare hand to first, and they get him. Christian Arroyo comes in and makes the play. The Red Sox ride Pham and Devers offensively and the back of Walker, Brazier, and Whitlock. Well, it was about pitching. It was about a little bit of base running and most importantly defense for the Boston Red Sox and the infield tonight showed up. Boston Red Sox, Christian Arroyo comes in bare hands, throws a strike over to Eric Hosmer to end the game. They were brilliant tonight all around. That's the final out from Arroyo. Cody, I'm going to have to ask you to stay. That game was two hours and 15 minutes. You feel like you earned your pay tonight? A little preview of next year when we have a pitch clock right here. <laughs> <laughs>